Hello everyone, welcome to the pre-recording of the graphics programming virtual meetup. And I lost count on how many meetups we have for now. The topic today is uh, retracing the next week books chapter 7 to 10. And we will finish this book today. Next time we will start to talk about the next book, retracing the rest of your life. The topic today is first we will introduce the rectangle shapes and then add some light to the scene. Then we will introduce instancing, which allow us to have different objects with the same shape but different transformations. And finally, we will introduce the volumes, uh, volumetric rendering. First, let's talk about rectangles and light. First, uh, to have a light in the scene, currently we just have a one background light that is everywhere. But we want to introduce a diffused light material that will emit light when we, we have intercept with it. The, the way we do it is to add another emitted uh, function to the material and it will take the UV coordinates and it will just return uh, the emit value of the texture. For, for every materials except the emitted material, we will just have a black color emitted. That means we will not emit anything. And then we can add a background color to our scene. So now our recolor function takes a background uh, parameter that will get passed into uh, itself recursively and get applied when we don't hit anything. The next step is to introduce axis uh, aligned rectangles. We will use those rectangles as uh, some rectangular surf, uh, surface light and area light, sorry. And so uh, axis aligned rectangles are really easy because we basically have two points, one point x0, y0, and another point x1 and yz y1 which is enough to specify the rectangles similarly for the rectangles in the yz plane and in the xz plane and we also need one uh, value to the fixed axis in this example uh, rectangle on the xz plane we need a z equal to k so we need some k value to fix the z axis the, when we talk about instancing, we will talk about how to apply transformation to this so we can rotate this rectangle into some arbitrary angles. The mass behind the axis aligned rectangles is also trivial. First, we just have a t calculated by on the on the z axis because the axis is already fixed. So by the equation of ray, we can get t is equal to z minus a z divided by b. And then we just apply the ray equation, ray function to x and y to get x, y coordinates. And for the x, y rectangle class, which is inherited from hitable, we will do exactly that. And for the bounding box, we will just use the bounding box of the shape. And for the z-axis, we will just have a really small offset to make this extra box. And finally, for the hit function, we will just do the above mass. And notice we need x in the range of from x0 to x1 and y in the range of from y0 to y1 if we actually want to intersect. Otherwise, we just miss the rectangle. Next step is we need to turn in these uh, rectang uh, rectangles into a light. What we do is to apply some diffuse light material 
pull the rectangle and we we add it to the previous thing so we we get this picture we can make different uh, shapes into lights for example we can also make sphere into a light and have this thing so basically we can turn arbitrary shapes into area lights this way and for x the rectangle and y the rectangle it's similar way to put up and for the here function it's just a lot of code duplication to do almost the same thing now let's code another thing called canal box which is a famous thing in computer graphics which we just have different walls you uh, that we coded by axis aligned rectangles with red white and green materials and a light on the top of the room and we also have some other parameters set up so finally we will have this canal box thing and this canal kind of box is really noisy because light is small on top of it in the book 3 when we talk about important sampling we will try to address this issue by not sacrificing too much of the performance or like just increasing the sample size and for the for the box we because in the current kind of box thing we miss the two box in the middle for the box we just need six axis aligned rectangles in the three different axes and then we can just add the box to the scene and we will have this image now the real canal box will have those boxes rotated in some degree and that is the topic we will talk about next so for instancing the idea is we have we have one object and instead of coding the similar similar object separately what we will do is have one object and transform it into the same so we, we just code the shape once and then we can use it a bunch of times uh, but um, what we need to deal with is to transform the shape from its original location into the new location and then and then some some ray intersects with the new shape will will just get uh, to just get intersect but the but the problem the problem is we uh it is hard to transform the whole shape because the shape the shape we are dealing with really trivial objects such as spheres and cubes but we can do it with quite complicated object and it's really hard to transform the whole shape instead what is trivial to do is to reverse transform uh, transform the ray so instead of moving the shape from here to here we can transform the ray from here to here and this will achieve exactly the same result as we will see later if you think about it and for translation we just have a vx3 offset and then for the hit function we just uh move the we just move the ray in the opposite direction of the original offset but after intersection calculation we need to offset back the intersection point and for the bonding box we just add an offset to the original bonding box for rotation it is a bit tricky since the book does not use matrices it is really hard to represent 3d rotations directly so instead what we will do is to represent 3d rotations by x y rotation around x y and z axis 
because this way the, we don't need any matrices of container getting involved. So rotation purely around x axis is the equation about the equation above, which I will not try to explain it. But it sh it should be directly corresponding to the two D rotation equation, and similarly we can get equation of y axis and z axis. And for example, if we have if we want to have a rotate y transformation, what we need to do is just pass a pass an angle in into the constructor and then in the constructor what we will do is to pre-calculate the sine and cosine of the angle and then also transform the bond bonding box and finally in the heat function we will just do the math we should above if we after we have done that we can add rotate y uh, to the box and then we will have the this thing with two rotated uh, boxes and then now the next topic to talk about is volumetric rendering so volumetric rendering can also be really tricky because on face value it is totally different from any kind of sh uh, solid shapes so in volumetric rendering we have a surface that the ray can pass through and but inside the surface our ray can get scattered somehow into different directions by some probability so one easy way to implement that is to say that for a small distance L that there are certain probability that this ray will scatter. And the simplest kind of material is just constant distance, so uh, constant sorry, constant density. So we will uh, in this case the probability of scattering is just some constant C times the distance. And we will calculate this by a constant medium uh, shape that takes uh, underlying shape as its boundary, also a density, and uh, texture is used for what kind what kind of uh, what what kind of uh, scattering this thing will have but since since we have constant media we will just have isotrophic scattering which means it will scatter evenly in all directions for isotrophic material we basically what we need to do is just pick a random vector vector in the sphere and the heat function of the constant media is a little bit tricky. What we first need to do is to make sure the ray can intersect with the boundary because if it's not, then, then we will, uh, then there are no way we will get any scattering at all. Otherwise, we will see, we will see if the ray will intersect with the boundary again because we want this ray to penetrate this boundary. Uh, also, this code also handles the special case of where we was we start at inside inside the medium because we start position is at infinite uh, negative infinity instead of zero. So this code will work on the this will code code will work even if we are inside the media. And then what we will do is to calculate the point where we have scattering 
and if so we will we, we will just do the scattering and and then uh, then just recursively call the hit function Other, otherwise if we don't have any scattering which is in in this case then then we don't need to continue As a result, we can have this thing where, where uh, we can show some volumetric effects. Uh, also, I missed a few slides. We, uh, the first is we will have we will have the constant density for the previous corner box thing. Where we apply the constant density, uh, constant media to all the shapes, and we will have this, and apply all the previous uh, uh, the features we add to our retracer. We can have this final thing. Thank you.